How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a look at Thor Love and Thunder. This is the latest entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the fourth standalone Thor movie, directed by Taika Waititi and starring Chris Hemsworth, Natalie Portman, and Christian Bale. Bale plays a man named Gore, and we first meet him as he and his daughter Love are struggling to survive in a desert wasteland. Sadly, Love does not survive, and shortly after her death, Gore meets his god and discovers he's kind of a dick. Never meet your heroes. Gore also finds something called the Necro Sword and uses it to kill his god. And then he thinks, well, why stop there? I'm gonna kill all the gods. Because gods are like potato chips, you can't kill just one. No, that's not right. And so he becomes Gore the God Butcher and succeeds in killing several supreme beings and the Asgardians are next. And it's up to everyone's favorite God of Thunder to stop him. And he won't be alone. This is Waititi's second time helming a Thor movie. The last time, of course, was Thor Ragnarok, which I enjoyed very much. Love and Thunder wasn't as good. I still liked it, but not nearly as much. For my own personal ranking, I would put it about on par with the first Thor movie and ahead of Dark World. A few things hold it back from being as good as Ragnarok, and as many others have pointed out, tone is the biggest problem. It is very inconsistent. It's certainly possible to balance the comedy and the drama, which Waititi normally does very well, but he was a bit off his game here. Gore is just brutally murdering people left and right, and kidnapping Asgardian children, and... Trying to throw in a bunch of jokey moments alongside that doesn't always work. Part of the problem may be that the comedy doesn't always hit. Some of it works. I did like how Thor is very conflicted by two of his exes coming back into his life. The exes in question being Jane Foster and Mjolnir. And somehow his current weapon, Stormbreaker, is insanely jealous of Mjolnir and Thor has to be like, No, come on, it's not like that. You and me, we're tight. And I really liked Russell Crowe as Zeus. Crowe is... Not the first name that comes to mind when I think of comedy, but he was very funny here. But then there's a running gag where Jane is trying to come up with a cool catchphrase because superheroes gotta have a cool catchphrase. And I get what they were trying to go for there, but it didn't really work. I think the big problem there is the catchphrase she does arrive at is kinda lame. Also, the screaming goats just... Yeah, that got old real quick. That might have worked if it was just a one-off gag, but they kept it going throughout the entire goddamn movie, and it just, it, it did not work. We also have a lot more Korg in this movie, which I think was a mistake. And I say this as someone who liked Korg in Ragnarok, but Korg works much better as a side dish. And he was getting into main course territory with this movie, and I, I don't think that was the way to go. And I'm a little disappointed that we didn't get more of the Asgardians of the Galaxy. Uh, if you remember at the end of Endgame, Thor decided to ride off with them. And they're in the very beginning of the movie for that opening action sequence. And then they just piss off and we never see them again. Felt like Endgame kind of wrote them into a corner and they had to very quickly write their way out of it. And there are some other moments in Love and Thunder where it seems to suffer from being in the MCU and thus having to connect with or set up other movies. At one point we see a statue that looks suspiciously like a Celestial from Eternals. Sif shows up in this movie very briefly and without spoiling anything, something happens to her that I kind of hope actually means something later on in the MCU because it had no effect on this movie whatsoever. And as much as I enjoyed Zeus, even his presence in this movie seemed to just be setting up things further down the road. Again, no spoilers, but if you saw the mid credit sequence, you know what I'm talking about. As far as the acting, Hemsworth is as good as he always is. He's obviously very familiar with this character by now. This movie is also the MCU debut of Thor's ass, if you're into that sort of thing. Bale was pretty damn good as Gore the God Butcher. This is a villain that is 99% evil, but he's still clinging to that 1% of his humanity, and he does it very well. And he is a sympathetic character, kind of reminds me of Killmonger in a way. He's a bad guy doing bad things, but damn it, he has a point. I was happy to see Natalie Portman back as Jane Foster. She was awesome. Uh, the whole thing about her becoming the Mighty Thor still confuses me. My understanding was whoever finds the hammer, should they be worthy, will wield the power of Thor. Not 
become Thor. When Steve Rogers took up the hammer, he didn't become Captain Thor. He was just Captain America with a hammer. But then Jane showed up in the armor looking pretty badass and throwing the pieces of Mjolnir around, because if you recall, Mjolnir was destroyed in Ragnarok, but in this movie gets reforged, but it can still separate into all those tiny pieces, and that's actually part of how she wields it. It's a really cool effect. And once all that started happening, it is remarkable how quickly I stopped caring about whether or not her becoming Thor made sense. Okay, she's the mighty Thor now. Cool, I'm in. The action sequences were a lot of fun, and the use of Guns N' Roses in the soundtrack complemented the action quite nicely. I was not expecting a fight scene scored by November Rain, but it kind of worked. I'm still not sure how, but it did. Overall, not one of the best MCU movies. In fact, I'd say Phase 4 overall has been a bit of a letdown. But I still enjoyed it, I had fun, and if you're a fan of these characters, I would recommend checking it out. And that's all I have to say about Thor Love and Thunder. Till next time, take care.